Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. You are listening to the podcast Project Me with Tiffany Carter, episode 40. What successful online entrepreneurs and marketers don't tell you, but I will. Hey guys, so what would be the point of listening to my show if I didn't share the tricks of the trade with you, right? I mean, I value my time and I really value yours. So a major motivation behind creating this podcast was to give you access to a multimillionaire mind hashtag me. Um, And the business strategies, the wealth creation, the money mindset, um, giving you, you know, exclusive business and marketing secrets that you wouldn't otherwise get because me having all of this knowledge, all the mistakes I've made, the wins I've made, all the stuff I've learned over the 11 years of being an entrepreneur, it really wouldn't be worth that much to me or as much if I wasn't able to help educate and empower other people to do the same. I love money. Money is awesome. Money is great, but that's not enough for me. So in this episode, I'm pulling back the curtains on what millionaire entrepreneurs are doing and not doing to achieve these awesome numbers online. I promise you, you're going to hear things that you've never heard or read before. Now, You may not love what I have to say, as I tend to not sugarcoat things, if you're familiar with me, Um, but I promise you'll be enlightened, informed, and empowered, and you'll have hashtag facts. Apparently, I'm in a hashtag saying mood today. I promise I'll try to keep it at a minimum, as that's very annoying. So let's go through some things, and I've mapped them out because I wanted to make sure I gave like distinct uh, examples and distinct things, um, that I know as myself and so many of my colleagues who are, you know, multimillionaires or who are in even the hundreds of millions on, in the online space on things we talk about behind the scenes in strategy sessions in masterminds in one-on-one client calls, things that are talked about that are at that level that maybe you guys haven't had access to or aren't privy to. I wanted to make sure I actually gave you those. And what's cool is, is I just got off one of those calls. So there are about five people on the call. This is a rather large client of mine that I've worked with for quite a long time. And in the online space, they're definitely making... um, multiple millions of dollars a year. And so it was good to I was jotting down notes on things we were talking about. Obviously, I wouldn't, you know, disclose any um, personal information, or business information or anything like that. But just general topics like, oh, my audience would be like shocked to hear that we talked about this. So let's get to it. Um, I'm going to talk about six things. So the first thing that successful online entrepreneurs and marketers uh, probably don't tell you or in a direct enough way is that time and consistency is your key currency, even over money. So I'll repeat that. Time and consistency are your key currencies and those even trump money. So for those of you who have a story going on that, oh, you know, they're successful because they have access to money or I don't have money, so I can't be successful. Time and currency are, excuse me, time and consistency are your two top currencies. Those do trump money. And without going into any too obnoxious of detail, I want to give an example of why. Okay. Um, For example, you have a website. It could be your business website. It could be your blog. Let's use like a blog as an example, because truly most websites are really blogs in disguise. Like those words are pretty interchangeable. So let's say you have a you have a blog. 
Um, and that blog is, let's say you have two blogs. You have one blog you started eight years ago that you post to, you know, once a week. Um, and then you have another blog that's really something you're more passionate about that maybe you just started three months ago or six months ago. That blog that you have that you started eight years ago or six years ago that you post to once a week, Google is going to definitely give you a lot more clout um, and a lot more, let's just use the word relevancy um, in the search engine than your new blog. It highly values time. So it's time and also it's having like consistent new content on your page but it doesn't have to be like consistent even every day, especially when it's when you're talking about over years. You have like one blog post a week over years. Um, that is definitely going to have you pop up in search engines much higher than your new blog. Even if you're doing three blog posts a day, you have quizzes on there, you all sorts of things. Your blog that's been around a long time and kind of like the slow and steady, the slow and steady wins the race. And it's not just Google, it's Bing too and search engines. So that's what I mean by time and consistency. So there can be um, a company that's worth a billion dollars, okay, that I work with. And they want to, they have a new product. So they want to do, you know, obviously a website around that product, maybe even a lifestyle blog that goes along with that product. Well, it can take years, even if you're pouring money into it, for that to catch up to maybe a product that they've had around for six, seven years. And those websites around it have been around that long and there's consistent content on it. Those will continually pop up if you like, for example, Google the company's name. Those will continually pop up well above this new product that they might have and new websites that may have that they have where we're putting a ton of money around because again time and consistency trumps cash you it, you'd have to spend a fortune in google ads and in big ads in order to really play catch up with a new blog versus a an established blog so I didn't want to get too in the weeds in terms of talking algorithm and all that techie stuff, because my job is to teach non-tech savvy entrepreneurs how to make leads and sales online. So that would be stupid of me without, yeah, I don't want to go into the weeds in that. And it's not that important. So when you see people on Facebook, on Instagram, or you're networking, and you're like, how in the hell are they making, you know, how are the hell are they making six figure, six figure years or seven figure years? And they claim that they don't do any advertising. It is time and consistency. I guarantee you, if you pull back the curtain and you see the pattern, they have had time online with with those brands. And maybe they've tweaked their brand over time, but their URL and all of that has been has been the same and there's been consistent new posting over time. So time will trump it. Time online, okay? So we can take the cash thing out of your brain. A lot of the discussions we have, especially with people, um, whether it's a personal brand or a company, that have money to throw at something and are willing to invest in that new business or a new product launch. They're like, Tiffany, well, let's spend whatever. Let's spend 100000 a month in Facebook ads and Google and Bing ads. Whatever it takes, we want to match the results that we have of our, you know, of our core product, product A, and we want to do it faster because now we have the money to pour on it. Yeah, it's not it's not that simple. Yes, you can get a lot further a lot faster when you pour money on on the right strategy and targeting, but you cannot pay for time. Just like we can't pay. I would love I would love to be I don't know if I'd want to I wouldn't want to be in my 20s, but I wouldn't mind being like 33. Like I don't know, I like that number. Like I can't pay to be 33 again. So you can't buy your way out of time online. Okay. Any questions on any of these, make sure you message me on Instagram or on Facebook at Project Me with Tiffany, and I will, you know, go into more details with you guys. Okay. So the second thing um, is 
the successful online entrepreneurs and marketers invest back into their business regularly. And this is when we're looking at people who just start and you're seeing that, wow, you know, in a very short period of time, they're really making money, whether it's months, a year, two years, they're making money. Well, it's because they've invested anything they're making back in their business and they've taken out business loans or they're using credit cards. I I have business loans. Um, I don't have any loans that meaning any business loan debt currently, but I had business loans when I started my first business. Um, I am currently leveraging the revenue from my first business that still exists, TLC Enterprises, to help invest in Project Me with Tiffany, my second business. So I'm I in sense in a sense do have a business loan. It's just a zero interest loan, right? It's like I have a silent investor and that investors myself, which means it's not that silent. It's actually a very annoying investor sometimes. Um so you see what I'm saying? So I at, you can do that at, at a certain point, And that's what I'm doing. Obviously, if I don't have to go and get a business loan and pay an in, pay interest or use credit cards, that's great. But in my first business, right, I didn't have another business to leverage, so to speak. So I got a business line of credit from my bank. And people who maybe don't have good credit, or because you don't have an established business, and you're not finding a bank that's willing to work with you. Yeah, you, a lot of people do have to do credit cards to start out. And I used credit cards too. And I still use credit cards to this day. I just pay them off immediately um, because of the high interest rate. So a lot of them won't tell you that they aren't really turning a profit. They might not turn a profit, which is very typical for two or three years. So because all the revenue that they are making, they're putting it right back in their business, which is smart. Now, this is not to say like, well, Tiffany, I can't imagine I have to pay for, you know, my kids sports, I have to pay student loans, I have to pay to get my nails done, whatever it is. It's like, I don't have two or three years to wait, I need to quit that corporate job. I'm not saying that they're not paying their bills. Okay, so I want to make this clear. What I'm saying is, this is with all of their bills, their business bills and their personal bills, i.e., you know, mortgage, utilities, cell phone, etc. So they're making enough revenue to cover, as you've heard, probably the phrase cover their nut. So they're covering everything that they need to cover. And but they're not, in a sense, paying themselves. They're not n- building some savings account or retirement fund yet, or they're not taking um, lavish trips or, you know, buying those extra luxury items yet, because they are putting everything back into the business, meaning they are having a Facebook ads fund, they are having a Google ads and Bing ads fund, they are investing in themselves by hiring business coaches like myself, attending masterminds, conferences. That's what I mean by investing back into the business. It doesn't mean that you're not paying all of your necessary bills and maybe a little extras, you know, like some dining out, hair and nails, that kind of thing. But they are putting it all back in their business. So yeah, they might even say, oh, my business is generating 15,000 a month or 10,000 a month, whatever it is, even 100,000 a month. But when they go to do their business taxes, there is no profit yet. That is incredibly typical. And guess what? That is the case for Project Me with Tiffany. When I go to pay my business taxes, which is really fun because it's four times a year. Thank you. Um, That's for US people, you guys. Um, You know, I go to pay my taxes. Tiffany, Project Me with Tiffany Carter, that is not yet turning a profit. But that doesn't mean I'm not making money. I am making money. All the money I'm making, I'm putting it right back into the business. Um, So there isn't a profit yet. So I just want to make sure you guys know that when people are saying, oh, I'm having, you know, $50,000 months now, I'm having six figure years. Um, They are, I'm not saying, I mean, I obviously I would have to pull back the curtain and see if they're telling the truth. I'm not saying they're lying or anything, 
but it's revenue. We don't know what their profit is yet. And I just so you guys know, it is not uncommon for you to not see like a noticeable profit for even three to five years. At year two, you might have, you know, a small profit. Okay. Or at year two, you could have a big profit. And then year three, there could be no profit because, you know, things happen. You might have had a big launch or a big thing that really resonated. And then the next thing you floated out there got like a lukewarm reception. Okay. So wanted you guys to know that number two little secret. Okay. Number three, we don't always know what the hell we're doing either. In fact, a lot of times we don't know. And this goes for <laughs> this goes for, you know, top executives at major companies who, you know, those are highly competitive um, positions. This goes for, you know, celebrity status people. Um, this goes for some of the most sophisticated, um, wealthy people in this world that I've had the privilege to meet quite a few of over uh, over my career. It's not possible for us to know what we're doing all the time, okay? So you are not alone. Um, it is if you if you don't know what you're doing, you're you're doing the right thing because that means you're trying new things and you're experimenting and you're going outside of your comfort zone. Um, it is not possible with the amount of technology um, that is necessary in order to you know survive in this world now and to build an online based business and how much platforms change and introduce new products and features. It is not possible for us to know what we're doing all the time. But what successful online entrepreneurs and marketers do is they do their best to stay on top of the areas that they choose to focus on. And they don't choose to focus on 15 things. It might be three or four things that generate the most income and bring the most pleasure and then stay on top of those things. So I'll give a quick example. For me, I've been doing um, Facebook ad campaigns for people since Facebook ad campaigns started. So Talk about change. Oh my God. There's, I feel like there's a change every month. Now there didn't used to be as many changes and now it's just gotten insane. There's always a change. Even though I consider myself a Facebook ads expert and, and so do other people, people pay me to advise them and consult on crafting their campaigns. Um, and I do my own. I don't always know what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I, sometimes I lose money. And that's part of doing the campaign. It's like, oh, that didn't work. I just know to cut it off. But it's still trial and error because it's constantly changing and shifting. And there's constantly new players in the marketplace that maybe are, are spending a ton of money on that audience. Therefore, you're not getting as good of results. There's all these nuances. So I don't always know what I'm doing. And I, I don't have the all the answers. You know, a lot of people, when they hire a business coach, they want that business coach to have all the answers. A good business coach will clearly say, I don't have all the answers. I'm not your, you know, knight in shining armor. But I do know a hell of a lot more than you because I have a lot more experience in these areas that you need help with. But I don't have all the answers. I don't know anyone who does. I have a business coach that's $10,000 a month and um, is worth <laughs> crazy, crazy money. And he doesn't have all the answers. And nor would I expect him to. In the beginning, though, I kind of did. And I was bummed that he didn't. But no one has all the answers. And just because someone is wealthy, that doesn't mean they know more than you either. There's a little secret. They might have a lot of money because they were strategic and hired the right people and, and around them who were experts in each of their areas. So they were smart in who they brought on their team. But that doesn't mean they have any clue about any of it. So there's that for, for some food for thought. Uh, number four is, is there's a, you know, a well-known acronym that is KISS, keep it simple, stupid. Um, I teach something similar, a little different, which is simple cells, complexity repels. Okay. So what I, what I notice between successful online entrepreneurs and marketers and people who are struggling and spinning their wheels, you know, or just are at a cap and couldn't get any further. 
um, are people who offer too much or you go to their sales page or their website and there's like 5,000 things going on and they have 82 different, you know, freebies and you go on. I mean, it's just, it's too much. They have 17 different courses. They're trying to appeal to everyone, which in turn appeals to almost no one. I'm not saying you can't get sales that way, but you're not going to get that many. It's just too much. There's too much, there's too much going on. And a lot of clients hate when I say this, where I'm like, you got to pare it way down and niche way down and remove all this. It's like, but we spent all this time, effort, even money creating courses, creating freebies. And it's like, well, I'm not saying you can't repurpose those at some point, you know, but they can't be offered all at once. You offer all these things all at once. It's no one buys anything. It's too much. It's overwhelming. And people are coming to you in general online, unless you're a product, you know, even in a product based, you know, in a, if you're a product based business is a little different. If you're a service based business, people are coming to you to help them solve a problem as quickly as possible and, e- and easy. And they're already overwhelmed or they wouldn't be searching, right? They wouldn't be searching. They wouldn't have clicked on the thing. They wouldn't have engaged. They wouldn't be stalking you on Instagram. You know, they are, they are overwhelmed and they need help. And if you then bring them to your website or to something that has way too much going on with, you know, 60 different courses or whatever it is, it's like, oh my God, just tell me what, just tell me what I need to fix this thing. Not not everything. It's, it's overwhelming. It's too much. And they won't buy anything. Or maybe they'll buy one, you know, $17 thing, and then they'll never use it. And if they never use it, guess what? The likelihood is they never come back and buy again, because they know they wasted their money, and they didn't do it. So you need to keep things simple. And I'm sure you guys have heard to make sure that you, you know, niche and that's not, you know, that's not some secret. So here, I'm here today to, to tell you things you've not heard before, but it's definitely pare it down. Less is more, less is more, less is more. And yeah, I know it's painstaking to go, oh my God, you're telling me to not have these up there, you know, and I put all this time into it. Okay, well, calm down. What you're doing clearly isn't working the way you want it to work. So try the less is more approach and I'm not saying you delete these, these uh, content pieces or whatever you've created. I'm not saying that. Or even if it's a tangible product, I'm not saying you like all of a sudden, you know, start a fire and burn all your cute tank tops and hats that you've, you know, you have that weren't selling. Maybe you just introduce them at a different time or more slowly, or you have, you know, you have 15 product SKUs at a time versus 70. You know, each business is unique, but I will say again, less is more. Even if you want to look at a comparison, like in the fashion world, um, you know, whether it's men's lines, women's lines, accessories, you'll notice that they don't come out with a, their fall line, their spring line. And it has, 372 different pieces in that line. They'll have maybe one belt in multiple colors. They'll have maybe three different purses. Um, They will have maybe three different shoes, you know, a couple tops, two pants, a skirt, two dresses. I mean, it really isn't much. Um, It really isn't. Because again, less is less is more. Plus, when you get in that mindset of less is more, then everything you offer will be of such higher quality, right? It it just will be. It'd be like, instead of the 99 cent store, you'll have the Neiman Marcus. You see what I'm saying? Um, For those of you who are listening who aren't in the US, it's like a discount store, you know, versus a luxury store. Which do you which do you want to be for people? Okay. Let's move on to number 5. Pricing. This is a question I get asked all the time. How should I price this? How should I price that? Um a secret, so to speak, something that's not really talked about with successful entrepreneurs, online marketers 
is let's, we're going to do some math here. And of course I mapped it out ahead of time because I don't like doing math in my head. It hurts my brain. Um, let's say you have, and this applies to a product, this applies to a course, this applies to a, you know, a book, a guide, um, a mastermind, a webinar, whatever the hell it is. Okay. That you're selling online, um, a necklace, whatever it is. Let's say you're like, okay, I want to price it. So this is how most people think. I want to price it so this is available to as many people as possible, the masses. And obviously we all know that the percentage of people who even make six figures in the US is something crazy. It's like less than 3% of people. Okay. So it's like, okay, I'm going to price it at $49 so that I can get more people to buy it. You know, like, and I, and it's called a a volume buy. And this is, we're talking for you know, small companies. And when I say small companies, by the way, even my business, um, a seven figure business, that's considered a small company by investor standards, by wall street, all of it. That is a, actually a micro cap company to be specific. It's micro small just to put things in perspective. So you have $49, whatever it is. Okay. So in order Let's just say you put out a whole thing out there. I don't know what your audience is. Let's say your audience is 10,000 people, which, by the way, is not the average audience size on any social platform. Um, That takes a lot of work, time, consistency, et cetera, and ad spend to get there unless you have a specific niche or you've partnered with someone who has a high influencer status or celebrity status. But anyway... So your $49 item, you would have to sell a hundred of those in order to make $4,900. Now the rule is in social is that an excellent, excellent conversion rate of buyers based on your number of followers is 6%. So 6% of 10,000 is what, right? So you can see the number of potential buyers, that would be like superior and excellent. So at $49 times 100, $4,900, that's what it would take. You'd have to make that many sales, 100 sales. And to make 100 sales, and let's say you're not doing, you know, you don't have money for ad spend or even with ad spend, that's a lot of sales. So would you rather do that Or would you rather sell something for $497, which is approximately only would require two people to buy in order to get to the same, in order to get to the same, uh, a similar, a similar dollar amount. Okay. So what would, that's not two people. What am I talking about? That would be more than, than two people to get to that amount. And I'm not going to do, wait, yeah, that'd be 10 people. Sorry. Okay. So that'd be 10 people. So you want, Do you want to have to worry about selling 10 of your item, 10 of your thing, or 100 of your thing? So successful online marketers know their brand. If you are a brand that is a volume-based brand, you better be spending a fortune, a small fortune in paid ads, Google, Bing, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, you better be pumping those out and they need to be consistent, meaning ads that are running all the freaking time in order to sell on a volume sell without pulling, you know, blowing your head up. Okay. But if you want to price something a little higher, I just use 497 as an example you're not having to do that number of ad spend because the number of people you need to buy to get to the same amount is obviously significantly less. So successful online marketers know their brand. They know if they have a volume-based brand, they know if they have the numbers and their audience size for a volume-based brand, or if they need to go at a price point that is higher, um, that is by far not volume based, right? It is um, more niche based. Um, It's a more intimate customer experience in order to get that dollar amount. I would uh, be fair to say that 99.9% of you don't have volume based businesses, but you're wanting thinking a volume based sell 
um, would be better. Cause it's like, Oh, well, if I price it low and I just do the math, you know, I could get thousands of people. Well, where are these thousands of people coming from? Unless you're getting a ton of fresh eyes on you, where are they coming from? Because like I said, 6% conversion, 6% buyers off of your current audience size is considered beyond excellent, like tops of the tops. So you can do the math on your own audience size, whether you have 1500 people, 3000 people, whatever it is, that's like superior. And that's not in one week either. I'm talking 6% annually. Okay. So with pricing, you really need to look at that. I'm not saying you can't have lower priced offers. That's okay. But I don't want you to depend on that in order for you to be making revenue. That can be almost like an add on kind of like how you see with Amazon. Um, you know, you're buying, you know, whatever you're buying, you're buying a new toaster oven or something. And they have add ons like your body wash or face wash or a lotion is like some add on look at it like it's an add on. Um, not your bread and butter. And again, if that was a little confusing for anyone, since I threw out a lot of numbers, just DM me at Project Me with Tiffany, and I will, uh, I'll work it out with you. Um, I'll work it out with you in the DMs on your own product. Okay. So the last one that I have, number six, is paid ads. So this really goes along with some of what I've already said in number five. Um, but successful online entrepreneurs and marketers, and when I say successful, they're in consistent six figures, seven figures. And I don't mean like a hundred thousand a year. When I say six figures, I mean multiple six figures, uh, millions, because that's really where I know you guys want to go. Um, that's what you guys want because more money means you can make more impact and help more people. And I know you guys listening because you're taking your time to listen to this. That's what you ultimately want to do is you want to make a bigger impact and help more people. Um, and in turn, get paid and have all the fun things that you want for yourself and the freedom. In order to achieve massive numbers and to scale your business, paid advertising is required. And there's always one or two of you who send me a message and say, well, that's not true. My uncle Joe, da, 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 da. There are exceptions to every rule. There's exceptions to everything in life. There, there just is. Okay. And yes, um, you know, you never know who someone knows. Someone could be cousins with a key influencer and that person's really cool. Um, someone could have a celebrity as a sister or even like a sport, you know, some kind of sports figure in their family that's, you know, help help them get eyeballs. We we don't know. And that's not the norm. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm talking about what major, major earners in the online space, what we talk about in all of our closed door meetings and strategy sessions. And it's, we need to have paid ads. You have to have fresh eyeballs. Like I said, 6% of your audience, if they buy, that's considered blow it out of the park. Excellent. That's 6%. Okay. So the likelihood of getting that, you know, is that's a lot of work, time and effort to get that. You need fresh eyeballs over time and consistency. Like I said, number one, yes, you are going to organically get fresh eyeballs um, on your stuff, but not at a rate that you're going to be happy with and that you can scale that you can scale, you know, more, more rapidly. I mean, to do it organically, I mean, it is a ton of time in front of the screen and you can absolutely do it. It's a ton of time. It'll take more time. And I've seen a lot of people burn out and kind of fizzle out that way. So you want to scale, you have to do paid ads and the paid ads are to get more eyes in front of your stuff and the right eyes, right? You want to have customized um, to your audience, get in front of your stuff. Now that doesn't mean all of a sudden you do an ad campaign and it's like, Oh my God, you know, I, we had 5,000 clicks on this campaign, a link clicks on this campaign. I would think at least a thousand of them would have bought my, let's just say my $49 item or service. It's like, 
um, that would be a 20% return. And that doesn't exist. Like it doesn't exist in finance. It doesn't exist in the stock market. And it doesn't exist in advertising, even Super Bowl TV commercials. It that's that's preposterous. It doesn't exist. So <laughs> just wanted to make sure that you know that. Um, now, I always would like to say for at least every thousand link clicks, I would at the very least like to see one buyer. Now that is for um, a higher priced service, not high price, not like um, not like your highest offer, but that would be more like for you know the four hundred ninety seven dollar. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean that's pretty common is for a thousand link clicks to have one buyer. I'm not saying you don't have you don't have uh, you gained you gained maybe a whole bunch of email addresses, which is golden, right? That's a lot of what you're paying for when you do Facebook ads is you're paying to get uh, qualified email addresses that people are want are interested in your brand enough to provide their name and email. You're building your email list so that you can you can warm them up to you, introduce them to you. And over time, those very well can turn into sales. But to run ads and thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get all these sales because I ran ads. No, I would say out of every thousand link clicks, not impressions, not people who just see your ad, people who actually click and land on your landing page. Um, and that ne would need to be a very clear sales page, not like your homepage of your you know website or your about me or something. I would say you'd have one sale and I would be I would be pleased with that. <laughs> OK, so it 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 is not. I'm giving you obviously kind of like a rough idea. Every business, every ad campaign, every audience has nuances, but I just want you to know what you're paying for. Um, and this is the big dogs, the big players. You know, what we're paying for are those email addresses of highly qualified people that we're going to get introduce them to our brand, whether it's a personal brand or, you know, a product brand. We're going to warm them up. They're interested enough to provide us that information. So we're going to warm them up, give them more, you know, Fr you know, really good free content, invite them to some stuff, and then start peppering in some offers of things that we have for them that are in alignment to sell. And then you get sales that way. I know that you would love to just shorten the process and have it be, I just want direct buyers, like right from ads. Um, in this type of space, especially if you are a service-based online entrepreneur, i.e., you know, a, a coach of some sort, um, that's not going to work. Now, if you are someone who has a ton of money to spend on advertising and you're selling, you know, and I'm sure you guys have seen them when you're scrolling your feed, you're you're selling, you know, some kind of widget that's like really, you know, kind of popular and trendy, or you're selling a tank top with a really trendy, like current phrase that people are using that find hysterical, you know, or like, I don't know, I'm just going to throw one out there, like a hashtag mom life, you know, shirt that's, you know, done in some gold foil with a really, you know, cute mom that, you know, has like a kid in each hand and the ads done really well. And it's like, it's like $17 or it's $9.99 or something to buy. I'm sure you've seen those in your feed. Those do make a lot of money, but you have to understand behind the scenes how much money they are spending in their ad campaign. It is insanity how much they are spending. And it's not uncommon for these brands who do these volume-based you know, items like that, that 50% or more of their entire revenue was spent on ads. Now they're still end up making a lot of money, but they're putting in a ton of money to get there. So I don't want you to be thinking that way when you have a service-based business, it's very, very different. And even if you have a product-based um, business, if it's not like some gimmicky thing where it's literally some like, you know, random, like, you know, uh, trending widget or phrase, and you actually have a brand, a jewelry brand, a crystal brand, an oil brand, a CBD brand, you have a brand that won't work either unless you have some serious, 
serious mega cash to pump out there. So I just want you guys to think about these th six things that I gave you today. These are things that, again, happen behind the scenes and closed door strategy sessions, marketing meetings um, of high level, multiple six figure, multi mega multimillionaire um, entrepreneurs and digital marketing um, entrepreneurs and brands. Um, these these big players in the industry that you see, I wanted you guys to be able to have some insight on what's talked about and things that I've learned for myself to grow my business to a seven figure business. So it is not all what you think it is on the surface. So do your best when you go and we all get into that kind of comparison thing. Um, when you kind of go in that land try to hear my voice in your head. You know, that's, it's not all of what it appears to be. You're making assumptions. You really don't know what's behind the curtains, but what I just did is I told you. So I hope that can also help you. Um, if you're feeling discouraged or frustrated or things aren't going fast enough, I hope this also helped you understand how it really works behind the scenes, because we can fill in the gaps with a lot of assumptions based on people's pictures or videos or things that they, they say, but I actually know what the numbers look like, not just with my own business, but with dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, if not in the hundreds of other businesses that are, that are turning really big profits. Okay. So again, you guys hit me up on Instagram or Facebook at Project Me with Tiffany with any questions. If you love this episode, do me a fave and take a screenshot and post it and tag me. I would love it. Um, and I definitely will feature that as well. It lets me know which episodes that you guys found really valuable and then I can create more of those episodes um, that are similar, because I don't want to just be talking to talking, <laughs> talking to talking, I don't want to just talk to talk, I want to make sure that I give you guys something that's actually um, useful, helpful, satisfying, entertaining, informative, you know, all the good stuff. So as always, wishing you great health, wealth and worth. Have a beautiful day. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.